What is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest Pixel Plus UI version 3.6 Unicorn official build based on Android 11 and this is the 20 June 2021 build as you're noticing from this telegram post and you can see the change logs and stuff from here I have been using this ROM for a couple of days now and I would say the experience has been great but one thing that I have to mention over here that the app lock is still not like that much stable and here whenever you are receiving a notification from the locked app if you tap on the notification of that particular lock tab that app will open right away really sorry for the background noise guys i can't help it there are some constructions going on around my house so yeah and here let me tell you that the whole experience of the rom itself is very good like let me show you whenever i'm opening the lock tab it shows me that the app is locked actually and i can unlock it just by tapping on the free bit scanner but again on the notification panel whenever you receive a notification from that lock tab it actually opens that particular app and you can't really like see the app lock kind of thing where it asks you for the free bit scanner so that's how it is I'm using this like software kind of notch over here that's because whenever I'm doing like some kind of like camera usage of the front camera with the uh, apps like snapchat or in video calls it has the halo effect over here that's why I have to use this notch otherwise the halo effect appears for this notch you just have to type cutout on the search settings over here and just wait then it will appear in the developer settings as you're noticing in the display cutout i have been using it with the tall cutout but if you don't want it you can just go with the device default and even if you set that as you're noticing it does not switch to the like original layout that's why you have to go to the advanced reboot and just reboot the system ui once and as you can see right now the notch has disappeared in the android version section this is how it looks like we have the version 3.6 unicorn up here and it shows the pixel plus cy logo then we have the device name as sweet then the release type it shows as official the maintainer's name is Boloramy, and the android version is 11 of course as you are noticing let me go back the security patch is latest of june 5th 2021 and the stock kernel here is the 4.14.180 kernel and the build time over here says 19 june 2021 and the slinux status is enforcing jumping into the system panel it does have a system updater and you can check for updates from here but right now it shows the update check failed for some reason let me go back and in the gestures we have the quickly open camera then the system navigation gestures and if you go into the settings we have the gesture bar length then the gesture bar radius customization haptic feedback and the back gesture animations are there dead zone customization is there then the left edge right edge customization is there let me go back there are also the two button and three button navigation as well and here we have the swipe to screenshot and if you are wondering if it's working or not as you are noticing it is actually working so no issues whatsoever with the swipe break screenshot and this swipe break screenshot does have the long screenshot edit share and delete option and here we have the power menu there we have the sensitive content and stuff let me go back we have the quick torch then the playback control etc the stock keyboard over here is gboard because the rom comes with g apps and let me tell you if you're clean flashing this rom just use the card right there to watch the how to flash guide video if you're switching from miui or if you're coming from stock rom Talking about the stock launcher, well, this is the Pixel launcher, I guess, over here. Let me actually show you, as you are noticing, this is the Pixel launcher present by default. And here we have the overview suggestion disabling option, then the normal suggestion disabling option and stuff. But again, there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. To the left of the home screen, we do have the Google's Discover page. And swiping up gets you to the app drawer, as you are noticing. And swiping down gets you to the notification or the quick settings panel. And the whole UI feels very smooth. And I can't actually show you in 120 FPS, of course. But yeah, this is actually providing me 120 Hz very smoothly and the whole experience of 120 Hz everywhere is very smooth, no issues whatsoever that I have faced. Widgets in the home screen are working totally fine here and you can edit and add multiple toggles over here as you are noticing and you can add these kind of toggles. I have added a couple of toggles already. Let me show you and we have the night light over here but this night light if you have the DC dimming turned on then if you like change the brightness as you are noticing it does weird stuff it does disable the night light if you change the brightness so as you are noticing right now as you can see again night light does not work when you have dc dimming turned on that much if you are like adjusting the brightness so that's how it is we have the dark theme then the start record option and from here you can have the screen recorder with that you have the device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time then we have the hotspot do not disturb etc 
data saver option is there then the reboot toggle is there and if you tap and hold on this we can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot then we have the do not disturb then the volume panel option over here this is the sound toggle if you tap and hold on it you get the volume panel too and we have the always on display over here then we have the high refresh rate mode then the dc dimming option is also there and in the quick settings panel we also have the time in the big font and it has this accent kind of color and it has the date and stuff and in the settings panel this is how it looks like we have the big settings logo up there then we have the search settings option of course Talking about Volte calling, yes, Volte calling is working totally fine, but there is no call recording option over here. That's how it is. But Volte calling actually works super fine. Now here in the pixelizer settings, you will get all the customizations over here of this ROM. So if you jump into it, as you can see, by default, it shows this quick setting panel customization. We have the traffic indicators. Then we have the tint quick setting toggle. I have been using it with the default, but you can go with Android 12 or something if you like that. So with this, as you can see, this is how it looks like. I have been using a green kind of accent color. And if you go to the status bar, we have the double tap to sleep, then the brightness control as well is there. This is the double tap to sleep on the status bar and the brightness control again, as you are noticing, is working flawlessly, no issues whatsoever that I've had. Then we have the 4G icon over here, then the Volte icon, and you can also change the VO Wi-Fi icon styles and stuff. Then also you can change the Volte icon styles over here. So a lot of customizations regarding the Volte calling and we have the lock screen customization. We have the force fingerprint authentication. It should work if you can get your storage decrypted, but right now I have encrypted storage. That's why I did not enable it. And we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and stuff. Then the lock icon is there. Then the status bar option is there in the lock screen. The screen of animation is there. You can change it to CRT or scale or the simple fade. Then we have the extras. Here we have the power menu customization. There we have the advanced reboot. So let me show you in the power menu. We do have the power off, then the advanced option. If you tap on the advanced option, you get the directly rebooting option to the recovery, fast boot, or the system UI options. So yeah, and we have the smart home controls in the power menu too. We have the swap buttons option, then the in call vibration options. And from here, you can actually customize the volume panel over here to AOSP compact, tiled, or MIUI compact. And here, as you are noticing with the AOSP one, this is how it looks like. And yes, you can expand the AOSP volume panel just like this. So that's all the customizations that are there. And here in the battery settings, we have the battery percentage and stuff. If you tap here, you see the full battery usage over here. And we have the thermal profiles too. You can change the thermal profiles to the default benchmark, browser, camera, dialer, gaming, and YouTube options. Let me go back. We have the battery saver, adaptive battery, smart cutoff, and the full charge lasts about how long. It will predict that. And the screen on time shows up on the bottom. There is no option to see the battery temperature over here, but that's how it is. In terms of the battery life, if you're wondering, here are some screenshots. It gives you five and a half to six hours of screen on time, in my opinion, with like 100 down to 30% usage, in my opinion. And yeah, that is with 120 hertz. And you can get pretty much six hours of screen on time over here. That is not an issue. But I would say if the battery temperature and the charging cycle showed up over here on the battery settings, that would have been way better. And the fast charging is also working fine depending on your battery temperature still. And that's how it is. Let me go back. We have the display option. And here we have the brightness level, then the dark theme and the nightlight customization. Adaptive or auto brightness is there. And we have the status bar icon tuner. We can enable the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons from here. Let me go back. We have the live display. So you can calibrate the colors like the blue, green, and red stuff over here on the color side. In the styles and wallpapers, we have this theming option. And if you go and create a custom theme, these are the fonts that you get, as you can see. Plethora of font customizations are there. Icons only shows one. And if you click next as you can see you get these many accent colors so yeah plethora of accent colors that you have over here but you have to choose one then create a custom theme to apply that kind of accent color that's how it is let me go back and let's just like apply this accent color the blue one for the time being this is how it looks like and we have the other things like the wallpapers over here and if you go into the default wallpaper this is the default wallpaper that you get on this particular ROM and one more thing that I think I should mention over here that there is this pixel plus UI wallpapers so most of them are still loading but here are the wallpapers that you will get if you click on one wall wallpaper as you can see this is how they appear and you can apply them just by tapping on it and from here if you click on apply you can apply them to your home screen and lock screen then apply with external app or just the home screen or just the lock screen so this is how you apply but these are very like decent looking wallpapers you can apply from here this is the app that is present over here you can use it that is there like stock by default in the grid option we have up to five by five grid and in the clock option we have these many lock stream clocks as you can see plethora of clocks that you get we have this fluid option that i have been using but you can also go with the fluid v2 and stuff like that those should be working fine but again plethora of lock stream clock options that you can customize from
we have the colors and the font size then the display size dpi then inside lock screen we have the display media cover art then the music visualizer and stuff like that double tap to check phone always show time and info is there that is the always on display i have not been using the always on display because it drains a little bit more battery on the redmi note 10 pro i feel that's why i disabled it but you can definitely use the always on display if you want to yes the always on display does move around whenever you're using it double tap to wake is there that should be working fine and we have the full screen apps you can force particular apps to full screen prevent accidental wake up is there then the device specific settings are there and here you will find the refresh rate changing option to 120 hertz or 60 hertz if you want to switch to 60 hertz for some reason but i have been using it with 120 hertz that's the default one so yeah working super fine and we have the dc living option you can actually like enable the dc living from here in the sound settings we have the vibrate for calls then if you scroll down we have the ringtone changing option and stuff touch vibration dial pad tone screen locking sound charging vibration touch sound etc is there authentication vibration you can also disable that if you want to screenshot sound is there and we have the me audio direct from here you can change the headset presets over here to youth edition or something like that i have been using it with the youth edition the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is great no issues whatsoever we also have the hi-fi audio option and all the sound presets are there in the security we have the fingerprint the fingerprint scanner works flawlessly over here just by tapping on it as you can see it unlocks very fast so no issues whatsoever that i've had with the fingerprint scanner over here it is very reliable and very fast fingerprint scanner experience then the face unlock let me actually set up the face unlock now so setting up face unlock is done so right now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just double tap on the like status bar to lock the device and double tap to wake okay so for some reason it's not okay right now it did work let me try one more time as you can see very fast and reliable face unlock speed as soon as i double tap over here the device actually unlocks with the face unlock so yeah, no issues whatsoever with the face unlocking speed over here. Also, if you're wondering about the app lock, this is how the app lock interface looks like. We have the files, photos and stuff like that that I have locked. And here you can just tap on this lock icon and lock any particular app. You can search for any particular app just from here. You can hide the notifications from here. But again, from that notification kind of panel, if you tap on the app's notification, that app particularly opens right now. This bug is there in most ROMs right now. I don't know why it's appearing. But yeah, in the latest Corvus OS that has been fixed in Redmi K20 Pro. But even in Redmi K20 Pro, I have seen this app lock bug, which is present over here on this ROM. And you can actually change the app lock timer to instantly 15 seconds or screen off. That is cool. So I have opened a couple of apps that should be in memory. So right now, let me check if they are here. First open Chrome. As you can see, the test of your website is giving me 120 FPS. So yeah, the performance over here, you can imagine it is very good. Facebook, as you can see, still in memory. Twitter, still in memory. Play Store, as you can see, still in memory. Now YouTube. Yes, it is in memory, but this page just loads up over here once you open it, as you can see. Let me actually do it again. As you can see again, it is reloading. So yeah, this thing just happens. This is the thing of YouTube app. If you go to your channel with the app, this happens. So yeah, Instagram. Okay, so Instagram has been removed from memory for sure. And Google Home. Google Home has been removed. So some of the apps are removed, but Chrome is still in memory. Twitter still in memory. Play Store is in memory. YouTube right now, I think it's in memory. And Instagram right now still in memory. Google Home right now is in memory. So the memory management is decent, not bad at all. And here are the end to end Geekbench score of this particular ROM. Now, if you're wondering about the stock camera of this ROM, I would say yes, you might be disappointed with that because you, it comes with this Snapdragon camera over here and the UI is not that great. But yeah, it clicks basic pictures, no issues with that. So you, you might be using it, but I have installed Magisk over here. With that, I have flashed ANX camera version 185R. If you don't know how to flash it, check out the card right there. And here, as you can see, with that, the 0.66x or the wide angle lens and the 2x zoom works fine and the main camera of course is working fine even the front camera works totally fine here as you are noticing no issues whatsoever even the portrait mode is working fine and if you go into the video settings as you can see we have the 4k 30 fps option over here so no issues whatsoever this camera is working flawlessly we even have the pro video mode if you don't know how to get all of these in the custom rom you can click on the card right there again now let's talk about few more things like the google assistant it shows this feature is currently unavailable for this device so i'm not really sure why the voice command not working but yes you can swipe up from these corners to get the google assistant no issues with that but yes saying okay google does not do anything so that's how it is 
the safety net status you can see it passes even with magisk or even without magisk it should pass i would say so yeah banking apps is not a problem on this particular rom talking about the dm info if you are wondering about that dm info stays l1 so that means you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p on this rom no issues with that also with the led rgb remote app as you are noticing i'm using over here so with this the ir blaster is actually should be working fine as you can see the ir blaster is working flawlessly no issues whatsoever if you can see that light that means the ir blaster is working totally fine here so the pixel experience plus in my opinion is a pretty simple and like very good customizable rom over here on your redmi note 10 pro so give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is Tito from kdn tech signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now